Hey you guys, welcome back to B2B Fusion. I'm Derek West, your illustrious host. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at Amazon FBA, a popular topic here on the YouTubes, and it's all of a sudden an extremely competitive rival, Shopify. Unbeknownst to many people, Shopify late last year unleashed a fulfillment service to rival that of Amazon. Perhaps leveling the playing field between the two e-commerce giants and really opening up the opportunity in the near future for smaller sellers and newbies who want to control the relationship with their customers, a chance to have better customer experiences. So be sure to pound that like button for the YouTube algorithm to help spread the word, and let's dive right into the video. House arrest is slowly, but not necessarily surely, fading away. States are opening up their economies, and assuming rates of reinfection do not skyrocket because of this, we will slowly get back to normal. Unfortunately, like I've been saying for a while now, the economy is not gonna be the same probably ever again. Habits have been greatly affected by this crisis and will, and will be changing probably for good. The unemployment rate has hit over 14% since all the stay-at-home orders were first issued here in the United States. The real GDP rate has fallen by 4.8% since the self-imposed economic shutdown has begun. Commercial real estate is expected to plummet in value, as many shops, malls, gyms, office buildings, etc. may never see the same traffic that they once did and thus close up for good. Yep, so the picture is bleak. But there are some sectors of the economy that are going gangbusters. Being forced to stay at home means lots and lots of people are spending even more time on their favorite electronic devices. Whether it's gaming through their console or gaming rig, or browsing Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, etc. on their mobile devices browsing YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and more online. Question, what do I tell the people do when they're browsing their favorite content and giving away their preferences to internet giants? Answer, they're getting served with ads for things that they might like to purchase. And the companies poised to take advantage of this are of course Shopify and Amazon. Now, unless you've been living in a cave, you have heard about Amazon. They just so happen to be the largest online shopping company in the Western Hemisphere not the largest online shopping company in the whole world. That is a topic for another video. So subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss a second of the action. That said, they most certainly have market share in the US. The thing a lot of people don't know, or maybe they do, but they just don't understand it necessarily, is that Amazon isn't necessarily the largest seller of products on its platform. In sharp contrast, Walmart is the largest seller of goods on its online platform. So is Home Depot on its website. But Amazon, eBay, and Etsy are platforms for other sellers to move their merchandise. Amazon is sort of the big dog in the room, the 1,000 pound gorilla, if you will, of online shopping in the US and much of the rest of the Western Hemisphere. But it isn't the only game in town. You see, Amazon, depending on when you're able to look, currently consists of little less than half of all online sales in the US. The rest of those sales are made by the other aforementioned giants in e-commerce. We talked briefly about Etsy, etc. But there are also thousands of online websites where people sell products online. These websites can be created from scratch and self-hosted, which is sort of the old school way of doing it, or they could be created using a framework and hosted as a service by a service provider. Popular service providers include MooCommerce, BigCommerce, Belusion, Squarespace, Wix, and on and on and on. But of course, the big name in this space has been Shopify. If you were to search for Shopify on YouTube or Google or Bing, or pick your search engine of choice, you'd find a million different quote unquote gurus telling you how to set up a store. And maybe, just maybe, if you purchase their course, you too can be a Lambo driving e-commerce millionaire. In all seriousness though, Shopify and Amazon can be great ways to strike it up on your own, be your own boss, and make significant coin from the comfort of your own home. Both have their detractors and their boosters. And quite frankly, I can't decide which one is the right one for you. You have to inform yourself and make the right call. But then again, that's why you're watching this channel. But what am I talking about? As of late last year, Shopify is really starting to level the playing field in ways that a lot of people didn't really expect. To understand the significance of this, you need to understand the patterns for success in both worlds. You see in the e-commerce space, for both Shopify and Amazon, there are patterns that you can follow if you want to be successful for Amazon, first thing you have to do is find the product. There are actually many patterns to become successful on Amazon. You could write and sell your own books online. You could become an Amazon affiliate. It is possible to dropship on Amazon. When I say dropship, I mean find a product somewhere else. 
market it on Amazon and pocket the difference in price. You can even find obscure books somewhere. Read them out loud. Record yourself. You can even find obscure books somewhere. Read them out loud and record yourself while doing it. And thus make an audiobook which you can sell on Amazon's Audible service. But the big tactic you're likely to find online is Amazon FBA. It quite frankly is the pattern that a lot of people focus on and for good reason. You see it has the highest upside for the least amount of work. Now the Amazon FBA pattern that works for a lot of folks is that you find a product that you think will sell. There are many techniques that will allow you to do this. From Chrome and Firefox plugins that scrape Amazon for data, to watching for ads on various social media platforms, also to watching Google Trends and other trend watching sites. But once you have the product that you think you can sell, you then need to source it. Now it is possible that you could take raw materials and create your products yourself, but as you might imagine, this is quite hard. You could also do what Gary Vee says to do and go to garage sales, look for products that you might be able to flip, purchase them on the cheap, and then sell them on Amazon for a profit. Now that is hard to scale, but it's a great way to get started learning how to spot deals and source products at a good price. But what most people end up doing though is that they source their products from China or somewhere where they know they'll get a good deal. A great place to find manufacturers in China is Alibaba. But they are a topic for another video. Like and subscribe. Once you've sourced your product, then you have to market it. And once you've marketed it, then you've got to deliver it. Now one of the sticking points that people have with this particular method is where do they store all the inventory? And how do they deliver the product when the customer has selected that great and wondrous product? Well, that is the main selling point of the FBA in Amazon FBA. You know, fulfilled by Amazon. You see, you store your products in Amazon warehouses and they do all the work for you when your product is ordered by a customer. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. You come up with and source the product and do the marketing and they handle the technical details of getting it into the customer's hands. So what's changed is that they're now facing even more pressure from one of their biggest competitors and that is Shopify. So Shopify, as I'm sure you guys know, has been a topic of discussion on YouTube for well over three years now. But it as a platform has probably been around for about a decade or round about there. Shopify also has a tried and true pattern that you can emulate for success. And surprise, surprise, it's remarkably similar to Amazon's. And by that, I mean you need to find a product to sell. The tools and techniques for sourcing the products are also very similar to Amazon's tools. But obviously they are geared towards finding products that Shopify sellers are selling. Once you find that product, you have to source it. A lot of Shopify sellers, many of whom are on YouTube giving tutorials on what to do, will tell you that drop shipping is the easiest way to source products. And they're not wrong. In fact, many apps that plug into Shopify have been created specifically to enable drop shipping with some of the biggest suppliers that are currently known. The best known and largest drop shipping supplier is AliExpress. Oberlo is one of the biggest apps that enables this, but there are many others. And they don't all just source their products from China. There are apps out there that will source their products from the good old US of A. Now, of course, those products tend to be more expensive, making the sale that much harder. But savvy entrepreneurs know how to get around that little problem. In any case, once you've sourced the product, then you have to market it. Honestly, this is the hardest part of all, both for Shopify and for Amazon. But once you know about your product and you purchase it, then you have to ship it out. Again, this is where apps like Oberlo come into play. If you're a drop shipper, once the customer places the order, then an order is placed into the supplier and the supplier then turns around and ships it to your customer. Now, as with anything, there are pluses and minuses to this technique. Some entrepreneurs complain that the shipping times can be atrocious, particularly in today's day and age of next day free shipping from your biggest competitor, Amazon. Also, once the package gets into your customer's hands, it can tip off the fact that you purchased the product from someone else and simply had them ship it to your customer. There are ways of overcoming this, of course, but some sellers do see this as a significant problem. And these problems and more contribute to the idea that you really can only sell trinkets and items less than $20 in total price to your end consumer if you're going to be successful. And with the rising cost of advertising via Facebook and other platforms, your typical Shopify seller is getting squeezed pretty hard. What is an intrepid entrepreneur to do? Enter Shopify Fulfillment. Shopify, working through independent third-party fulfillment networks, has launched its own fulfillment service in June of last year. This service will allow US-based merchants who meet certain criteria to apply for early access to its fulfillment network. The value proposition that they are offering is timely deliveries and lower shipping costs for a superb customer experience. 
the ultimate goal is to offer Shopify Fulfillment Network to Shopify merchants of all sizes. Right now, the services offered by the Shopify Fulfillment Network include multiple channel fulfillment, returns and exchanges handled by their network, as well as custom packaging and kitting with branding from the Shopify seller. And again, they're looking to eventually expand to all sellers on their platform, but for now, for keeping their product offering relatively small. You're going to want to keep your knowledge base large by watching quality YouTube channels focused on business, technology, and personal finance. Do that by subscribing and clicking the notification bell. And while you're at it, if you haven't done so already, hit the like button if you liked this video. But with that in mind, you have the knowledge. How are you going to apply it? Leave us a comment with your thoughts on which path you prefer, Amazon FBA or the newly minted Shopify Fulfillment Network. Are you disappointed that Shopify Fulfillment is only available to sellers that meet certain criteria? Or are you excited that you may soon have a fulfillment alternative to Amazon FBA or these third-party fulfillment centers? Let us know in the comment down below. And remember, a goal without a plan is a wish. A goal with a plan and no action. Well, that's a wish list. Be sure to take action on your business and finances using the power of technology. And we'll catch you next time. Peace.